It looks like it could be challenging, but if you'll just take your time, this is really not hard to do at all to get into these balsa planes. And then you get these big airplanes that open up all kinds of possibilities for different stuff here at Motion RC. <laughs> Hello pilots and welcome back to Motion RC. Today's quick tip is how to assemble a Black Horse model's wing. Now a lot of the assembly is going to be the same throughout the airplane, so what we're going to do is just focus on this one component for right now. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is be gluing in our hinges. Uh, this has the style that a lot of people call a Dubro style hinge. Um, and we're going to also be putting the servo in and doing our linkages. So when we get done, this wing will be completely finished and ready to go on to the airplane. Now let's go over a few of the items we're gonna be using today to get this complete. First up, we're gonna definitely need some isopropic alcohol. This will be very handy if we make any kind of little spills or mistakes when we put our epoxy into the hinges. Uh, the isopropic alcohol wipes that 30 minute epoxy right off of the airplane without making any damage. Next thing, of course, is some 30-minute epoxy. Uh, you can get this here at Motion RC. We have a full selection of glue in our Benchcraft line. We also need our Benchcraft razor blade. It's going to be to cut out the monocoat wherever it needs to be done. Another great thing to get is a thing of Q-tips. Uh, this is going to help to shove that epoxy down into the holes where the uh, hinges go. Something to mix up our epoxy in. I like these little cheap cups. I get them at the uh, dollar store some masking tape to hold our uh, hinges together as we glue them, and lastly, some three-in-one household oil. Uh, what this is used for is you put it on the hinge and it keeps the uh, epoxy from getting inside of it. Uh, you can get this at any local hardware store. It's just called three-in-one oil. All right, so with that, let's get down on the table and let's start our assembly of this wing. All right, so our first step at getting the wing put together is getting our servo installed into the wing. To do this, we're going to need to take and flip the wing over, find where the pocket is that the servo is going to go. You'll feel this with your fingers. Once you've found it, take a very sharp, preferably brand new razor blade in your Benchcraft X-Acto knife and cut out as nicely as you can around that hole where the servo is going to go. Once you have it cut out, we're ready to assemble our servos. In the case of this model, I'm gonna use one of our high-tech D645MW uh, wide voltage super torque servos. For guys that haven't ever put together one of these servos before, when you order any of these uh, servos that are gonna fit into your balsa planes, they come with these little rubber gaskets. Those go in first into where the screw holes would go. And then you push the brass fittings down inside of that. And that makes a little bit of a shock absorber for the servo. Next, we like to take a drill bit, pilot drill our holes through those brass inserts, you're not gonna hurt them. Then take our four provided screws that come with the servos and attach the servo to the wing. All right, now that we have our servo installed, we're gonna go on and get our hinge put on our aileron. Now, personal opinion here, I like to put them on before we glue our hinges and everything in while I can hold it in my hand and it's nice and easy to do this. But you could always glue your aileron on first and then put your hinges together uh, just as long as you make sure you do it however you feel comfortable. So what we need to do right now is find where the hinge goes, uh, this style of hinge. Now this can be different depending on which model you have, but for most of our Black Horse line, they use this exact same style. Uh, so we're going to find that hole where it goes and poke holes into the covering. After we've done that, it's as simple as pushing the hole or the, uh, the screw up through the hole and tightening up the hinge. All right, now that we have our servo in and our horns installed, it's time to actually put the hinges in themselves. Now, go on and use a 30 minute epoxy, a not a five here. That way you have some working time. You can slide it around. A five minute epoxy is gonna set up very fast when you're trying to put all these little pins in. So give yourself that time with the 30 minute. The other thing I tell you to do is go on and slide all your pins in at first, test fit the control surface on and make sure everything lines up and fits. Once you start putting epoxy in here, there's no turning back. You've got to get it done. All right, so what we're going to do first is take our hinges and a little bit of our three-in-one oil 
We're going to drip it onto the center section. That's going to keep any epoxy from getting into the hinge when we glue it in. Then we're going to take the inner hole that we're going to slide it into and take a Q-tip with epoxy and shove it down into that hole. Get that nice and, and well covered. Then take the edge of the hinge and we're going to cover that in epoxy, then shove it into the hole, making sure to always keep our hinge lined up in the direction of travel we wish to have the uh, aileron or elevator or however you're gluing on right now. They need to be able to turn in the right direction. Once we get all the pins in for one side, we're going to take and put epoxy on the other end into, into all the holes. Then we're gonna take and put epoxy on each of the hinges and then slide the two halves together at that point. Once you have the two halves together, go on and give that a wiggle and make sure you have up and down travel and nothing's binding out. This is the time you need to catch it if one of yours has turned inside of here and it's not letting you go up and down. You need to catch this before everything hardens up. Once you're sure you have everything in the right positions, we're going to take some of our uh, painter's tape and we're going to pull everything nice and tight and get it right where we want it and use the tape to make sure it doesn't move. Once we get all that set up, we need to just let this set for about an hour before we come back and do anything else with this. I know it's 30 minute epoxy, but give it a good solid hour. Then you know nothing's going to get uh, moved around or jostled while it's trying to dry. All right, now that we have our uh, control surface all glued on and setting up, let's go on and get our uh, control linkages built. Now, these are ball link on most of these Black Horse models. Uh, and the way they go together is you just screw the two ends on it and then snap the balls in themselves. And then you're going to put a screw through the hinge that's going to hold this onto the control horn. Uh, same thing up on your actual control horn for the servo. Uh, you're going to have to maybe drill it out just a little bit. I did on this one to get it to where you can pass that bolt through the control horn. Uh, but once you do, you just bolt it on super easy. Hey, so that gets the wing of our s bock all completed. Now, like I said, if you're doing other Black Horse models, the hinges are almost always like this. So it's the same process whether you're building the s bock or a Corsair or whatever you're building that wing is gonna be the same process. Now, a lot of the uh, Warbirds available here are gonna have flaps. You're gonna have two servos out there in the wings, uh, but they still install the same way. So hopefully this quick tip really helps some of you that are starting to get into these Balsa airplanes that we're offering now, and uh, give it a try. As you can see, it looks like it could be challenging, but if you'll just take your time, this is really not hard to do at all to get into these balsa planes and then you get these big airplanes that open up all kinds of possibilities for different stuff here at motion rc well guys i hope you enjoyed today's video uh, like always make sure you go over to hobby squawk forum or our facebook customer community share what you're working on and uh, let us know any other quick tips you'd like to see so whether it's land sea or air motion rc has what you want see you in the next video bye